Mario, in two years' time, given the compressed time frame, do you think we will have a firm deal between the UK and the EU? And is it likely to look <laughs> anything like or close to um, Theresa May's vision that she laid out this week? I believe so. I believe that in recent days we have all gained uh, clarity and I very much subscribe to the Chancellor's spirit of a down-to-business negotiation without any residual acrimony and uh, in a very highly constructive spirit because at any rate so much remains uh, in common in terms of interests. Uh, and I welcome this clarity. Uh, my view on what will be in the medium long term the economic consequences uh, of Brexit on the UK and on the EU does remain very negative, however. <clears throat> I, I will not go here into the details, but uh, I thought I might uh, try to reflect for one minute on uh, whether or not uh, we are going to see a British contagion in terms of disintegration. Mm -hmm. Now, we are speaking here today on the very day in which uh, the uh, far western potential disaggregator of the European Union makes the oath of office. I, I hope that that commitment will not feature very prominently in the oath, but at any rate has been somewhat, <laughs> somewhat uh, uh, proclaimed. Um, and uh, so well, will there be uh, in a EU already under stress because of this uh, uh, more rough treatment from Washington and under the impact of Brexit? Will there be a tendency towards further disintegration? Um, I believe not. And let me see the thing at, at three levels. Governments, heads of governments in particular, political parties and the public opinion. Well, in terms of uh, uh, leading figures in governments of the member states, I believe what happened uh, can lead the 27 other leaders to reflect quite a bit. Because David Cameron uh, was different from the others only in terms of magnitude. Most of the current leaders of member states do play the game for domestic political purposes of extracting as much as possible from the EU by damaging its reputation by making its decision confusing uh, in order to gain more political support. Now, Mr. Cameron did this, uh, whom I admired and admire, did this to an untold level because, of course, he called for the referendum not in the European interest, not in the British national interest, not in the interest of his party, but in the interest of his position within his party. And uh, he uh, put uh, his country and the whole of Europe uh, on the line to achieve this. The consequences, at least uh, in these months, have been rather devastating, not only for him personally, but because the whole political establishment in the UK has been blocked, paralyzed and made uncertain. So I believe that the others will find this an admonition to be a bit more careful in the game of destroying the EU in order to improve their positions party-wise or, or personally, domestically. Political parties, however, uh, it is undeniable that those movements that there are in France, Italy, in all countries, having seen that uh, secession is possible, are uh, bolder, are bolder. And what about the public opinion at large? The Bertelsmann Foundation published, I think, a month ago, a poll uh, which they do regularly on the willingness of citizens of the main member states of the EU to stay or to leave. Interestingly enough, uh, a few months after Brexit, in all countries, the percentage of those wanting to leave the EU has gone down. 
I regret very much that in my country, Italy, the percentage is the highest. But in all countries, it has gone down.